Right now, I'd like to encourage you to do a little bit of a self-diagnosis on your motivation levels. How has your motivation been over the past week or month or even the past two years? And I'm talking to you specifically as a business owner or as an entrepreneur, somebody who's really trying to build something big, create something that's exciting. As you know, Anything big like this that requires months or years of effort, sustained effort, there's going to be some really good high points, exciting times, and there are also going to be some low points, times when things don't go quite as expected or don't go as planned, or you're just not really connected to what you're doing. Now, the times when you're feeling demotivated, it's going to happen. It happens to all of us. And getting that motivation back or re-motivating yourself doesn't necessarily happen by default. Um, Unless you're one of those really uh, tiny percentage of people out there that are always motivated, always on fire, always passionate. Most of us have to actually consciously make an effort to get motivated. We have to make ourselves feel excitement all over again. It's very, very important you know how to do this when you hit those low points or when you hit those roadblocks that can you that can kind of steer you in the wrong direction, get you off track in this video what I'd like to do is give you some strategies to help you feel motivated when you need it the most. In particular if you can walk away with one or two ideas here that you can implement starting today so that anytime you you even notice your motivation levels dipping you can implement one of these ideas to get back on track, get productive again and keep your eye on the prize where you're going. These goals that you're trying to achieve. So Let's start with physical exertion. By now, you know the fact that mind and body are tightly connected. In fact, you can't change one without changing the other. You need to take a look right now at what your motivational levels have been at and how that relates to how you've been using your physical body. A lot of us as small business owners, especially in this day and age, we do a lot of things digitally and online in front of computers and our physical routines are naturally lending themselves to lower levels of excitement and motivation because we're just sitting around in a chair. I'm doing it right now talking to you. We're not moving. We're not using our bodies the way we would if we were in the physical work. Now, there are people out there that do do a lot of physical work during the day and they probably enjoy the time when they can relax and switch off. But not being physical can have a very detrimental effect on your thinking and on your mood. So it's time to think about how you actually use your body on a daily basis. And you can use this as a tool to increase your level of motivation, increase the mood and the happiness that you feel and also that level of excitement and passion you have for your work. A couple of quick examples would be going back to the idea of somebody who works in front of a computer a lot. Um, Maybe that's you, maybe not. But if you're sat in front of a computer, you're not using your body to its full extent throughout the day. So how can you change the physical state of your body? Can you go from a sitting position to a standing position? Because once you stand, how can you use some stretch movements or running on the spot, yoga positions, jumping jacks, push-ups, sit-ups, whatever it may be to literally change how you're using body at that moment. And just a few moments of sustained pressure or exertion on your muscles on the physical structure of your body will create a chemical change in your body, which also will have an effect mentally. You've seen this before. Anytime you've gone for a walk, you've probably felt a little bit better about yourself. Walking is another good example. It's what I do, or at least try to do, nearly every day at some point. So with this first particular example here, physical exertion, take a few few moments right now. You might even want to pause the video, write down five or six different ideas of things you can do with very minimal effort and even minimal time spent, where you can actually use your body, get up, Make sure you create a positive momentum and a sense of motivation. Now, especially when you hit those low points, whether it's a low energy point in the day, a low level of motivation, maybe even just hit a a gap or a state where you're feeling just a lack of confidence in what you're doing and you've got this sense of demotivation, you can bring it back to a high level again by using your body doing physical exercise. But you need to have some specific strategies that you're going to use when it comes to that physical exertion. So... Write them down, five or six things that work for you, work for your env- that work in your environment where you are that you can actually do very quickly without needing a lot of planning. 
And if you're not going to go um, run a marathon or put on some skates or find a skating rink, it's got to be quick. Going for a walk, doing a few jumping jacks, whatever it may be. Walk around the house. Walk around the house. Take a break. Write those down, whatever order of preference you have, and use them. Try them out the next time you're feeling demotivated. The second thing, and it's one thing I actually like to do as well, is um, use audio programs. Here I'm talking about specifically either audio books or audio versions of inspirational or motivational type of material, or audio recordings of great speeches that have been recorded live that you can listen back to and capture the essence of the moment, what the speaker was talking about. These are great little strategies that you can implement and again in a very short period of time. Let's say, for example, your daily routine involves a work period followed by a break period for some food, a snack, and so on, maybe another work period after that. However, your schedule is set up. Instead of just getting up to prepare food, you could actually quickly throw on a set of earphones or headphones and plug into your phone that's in your pocket so your hands are free and you listen to a specific segment from an audio program. If you plan it in advance, which is even better, you can actually take a segment that's relevant to some of the tips and advice you need right now. As an example, maybe you've been really hectic and chaotic and kind of feeling out of control recently. You can actually go and find a passage from an audiobook or you can find a speech given by somebody who's really good at the concept of calming down, finding peace. Uh, Serenzi, getting centered all over again. You put that audio on for like 15 minutes while you prepare your meal. Your conscious mind can now be occupied with this entirely new perspective while you go about doing all the other things. You're not losing any time. You can still prepare your meal, still do, do all the things you were doing before, but you're adding this extra layer of almost a distraction. Instead of fussing over and stressing over all the things you have to do while you're preparing your lunch, you're totally taking your mind and focusing it in a different direction. You're reminding yourself to get centered, to calm yourself down, remembering to breathe and doing all those different things that are good for your own mental and physical health, but at the same time, getting you back in touch with who you need to be from a motivational perspective. See if you're feeling calm and confident about your work and you're able to do that over your lunch break or over your snack break or when you go for a walk even. When you get back to your desk or back to your working environment, you'll be far more productive and motivated to get things done. So try some audio programs out. Remember that audio programs are great not just for in the car when you're driving, but anytime you do something that's not specifically for concentration or focusing on your work task at hand, like preparing a meal. You can use this to your advantage to actually get some study time in and motivation time that will fuel you moving forward. I actually like to use Audible. Um, there's a lot of good stuff out there. And when I go for a walk or when I'm sitting going through things, I can actually play a book, um, listen to different things, sometimes fiction, sometimes self-improvement. But I've actually got this uh, audio program going pretty much constantly when I'm not having to make the phone calls and when I'm not having to focus. Great way to re-motivate yourself and get moving again. The next one is reading. And this may seem pretty obvious, but I wanted to mention it because reading is something that most, if not all, successful people do, and they do it far more than the average person. I think there are surveys that, uh, that took um, uh, asked the most successful CEOs in North America, and they average 52 books a year, one every single week. Now, obviously, there's a ton of information coming in, and you're not going to be able to implement it all, but there's a sense of inspiration and motivation that comes naturally from reading. Some of you may be using a Kindle book. Some of you may like physical books. But like we talked in the very beginning of this presentation, unless you're one of those absolutely always on people naturally motivated, you have to motivate yourself, and sometimes reading for a little while can really do that for you. But here's what I found. You've got to be able to find a unique time every day, ideally at the same time every day to do your reading. Just picking up a book in the middle of the day doesn't naturally lend itself to motivation. Some people like to do this early in the morning before they start the day, before they've checked their email or text messages or voicemail. They carve out 30 to 60 minutes to sit down and read a new book or reread an old book that was very helpful to them. It inspired new ideas, it inspires creative thinking, it reminds you of valuable life lessons that you know but maybe you forgot to practice. And there's no shortage of good books, especially in today's age. 
There's good reading material out there everywhere from leadership, business development, general personal development, inspiration, and even sometimes fictional novels that can have a profound effect on your levels of motivation. So what I'm going to do uh, now is suggest that you find time every day to do a little bit of reading, at least a few times a week, if not every single day, to actually sit down and read books that cause you to feel a sense of motivation and remind you of the things you need to be thinking about so that you feel good about yourself and you feel exciting to attack your day and go after the major items on your to-do list rather than feeling overwhelmed and like you have to be there. This is your goal. You should want to do it. Reading will be a huge way for you to stay connected to that sense of passion and inspiration and motivation. And guess what? If you actually read on a lot of these inspirational books or self-help books and books about your business, it's like doing a whole university course on your subject. They actually say within, um, if you read a book a week for like three years, you'll actually have a better education than if you went to college for two to four years to actually get the actual skills you need to grow your business. So, read books, read books, read books. <clears throat> the next one is your future vision. So I want you to think back to some of the goals you're working on right now. Maybe the one you've been on at, uh, been at for a long time, like big, 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 big goals that you've been working on for multiple years, as an example. So when you first set up these goals, they were driven by something. They were driven by an internal desire to do something that ultimately is your vision. It's a vision of yourself in the future being, doing, and having different things. But what happens to a lot of us is we set these goals, we get busy working, and we get so caught up in the day-to-day -day that we actually forget. We forget entirely what that future vision was. So a very quick exercise you can do to kind of re-motivate and re-energize yourself is the future vision exercise. You can do it on something as simple as a piece of paper in a notebook, on a handheld device, even off your, on your computer if you want. All you do is reconnect with all those visions of yourself in the future that originally inspired you to begin the journey that you're on right now. You might want to start off with something like, I see myself as... And then you think, in the future, I see myself as a wealthy entrepreneur. I see myself as a success, an inspiration to others, and so on and so on and so on. Whatever it is that really drives you to do what you do, you're reconnecting with your reason why. You're reconnecting with some of the tangible results that you're hoping to create. So you're allowing yourself to experience what that end result is going to feel like once you achieve it. That is if nothing else, will remind you of the path that you're on and recreate that sense of motivation that you might have lost in the day-to-day -day minutia. Don't forget about your future vision. Don't forget to use this exercise to your advantage, even if you just take five minutes a day in the morning before you start that day or even at the end of the day to re-energize yourself and say, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. Know where your future vision is and use it as a motivator. So the next one is kind of, um, it's, it's actually called, a, it's like a negative motivator. And this is where you remind yourself that you have something to prove. I guarantee if you've got a big goal and you've been working on it for a while now, you've run into somebody or a group of people that told you all the reasons why you can't do it, why your idea is dumb and why you should give up, etc., etc. Has that happened to you? I'm going to guess it has. And it happens to anybody that strives for success. Most of us that are success bound and determined to make things happen will use that as a fuel versus using it as a roadblock. You need to remind yourself, in your, if you're in a state where you're really low, you're down, you can't seem to get any work done, you can't seem to be productive, maybe you've even lost touch with your confidence, here's where the something to prove exercise, this negative motivator, can really help you. Spend four or five minutes really dwelling on that person that told you it couldn't be done or told you that your idea was crazy or that you'd never achieve it, whatever it is that you're setting out to do. Now let that passion, let that sense of disappointment, whatever that negative emotion, however it manifests itself for you, let it well up inside and then channel it forward into positive productivity. The I'll show you mentality is huge and has affected so many entrepreneurs. Now. Obviously, this isn't a space you want to be spending a ton of your time. I don't want you to dwell for hours and days 
on all these negative people in your life, you're going to use those negative messages as tools to flip a switch that says, I'm motivated to prove these people wrong. I'm motivated to show them what I'm made of. That's a sense of high energy, high level of motivation that you can channel directly into your work, directly into being productive that can carry over for days, weeks, right to the end of a project. And that project might be the stepping stone you need right now to get to that next level. So don't forget, you're always trying to prove something, not just to yourself, but the, to the doubters in your world, and you can make it happen. Use them as tools, use them as fuel for your fire, for your motivation to get things done. Your environment plays a huge role in your levels of motivation and passion and excitement for your goals. Some people are naturally lucky to be surrounded by positive people and they live in a great environment that supports their success and their well-being. Well, well -being. But many other people aren't. And it's up to them to actually put themselves into environments where they can get that positive support and encouragement they need to succeed. For you as a business owner, it's important for you to take a look at the environments that you spend time in. Now, the last two years have been kind of stressful for a lot of people. But it ranges right across the board from your family life to your working environment, colleagues, partners, customers, to the environments in terms of your digital world. Where do you spend time with communities you're involved in online? Facebook, Facebook groups, forums, Skype, LinkedIn, Twitter, Pinterest, things of that nature. Every single one of these environments that you go into and you spend your time on, you socialize and interact with other people are either going to help you move towards your goals and feel good about them and feel encouraged to keep going, or they're going to pull you away from that and make you feel lousy, make you lose a ton of energy and drive. It's up to you to evaluate which ones are worthy of your time, which ones need to stop spending much time on and maybe cut out entirely. What you want to do right now, and I'm going to suggest this exercise for you, is to take a few minutes to think about all the different environments, whether they're physical, in reality, in real world environments, or they're virtual, where you're spending time online Write them down, okay? Write them all down and understand how they affect you both positively and negatively. Then from there, obviously you want to look at how you can increase the amount of time you spend in the positive environments and maybe even have to actually enter a new positive environment. One great example of this is a mastermind group. Now, I've been looking at mastermind groups for quite some time now. There are tons of different mastermind groups available nowadays where people of a like mind, maybe similar business owners getting together to build each other up and share ideas. Maybe you need to be spending an hour a day in there instead of an hour in day in some other group where everybody's complaining about the world and all the bad things going on and who's doing what wrong and which government policy and so on. A simple switch of that environment could actually change your entire life, could change your entire set of motivation. So do a full environment audit and give yourself the opportunity to spend as many hours a day as possible in environments that support you rather than harm you. I thought about the next one and they're actually called trigger songs, right? The next one is really, really simple, pretty obvious, but it has to be mentioned and I wanted to remind you of it just in case. Trigger songs. Exciting music that pumps you up, makes you feel good, gets you out of a rut if you happen to be in one. What kind of music do you like? Is there a certain genre? Is there a certain artist? Is there music from your high school days that you've forgotten about that really makes you feel great in the moment? Take some time today to go back and make your own playlist. You can add a playlist on YouTube. Um, there's all sorts of kind of different apps nowadays. You can download the music. Maybe you already own it. Maybe it's a CD you have. Um, I actually use iTunes, uh, iTunes on my Windows desktop. And when I know I'm not going to have calls or meetings, I actually play some of my CDs that I've copied onto iTunes. So you can pick and choose moments in your day where you play a single song. How long is the song? Three to five minutes maybe? Or you can play a whole CD in the background while you're working. You can put your headphones on or you can go to your car um, if it's going to disturb other people. Whatever you need to do and get the, get the music cranking. Let yourself actually feel the beat, feel the music, feel the excitement that gives you and that radiates through you, allowing you to carry that into your next section of your day, getting motivated, right? Sometimes you don't have to do things that are all that complicated. 
A quick song will switch your mood from low to high, get back to being productive and working on whatever it is you need to work on to move towards your goals again. Don't forget about using music. It's it's such a motivator when you get the right tunes. Along the lines of music, we've actually got video, right? YouTube being a huge purveyor of video, there's also Vimeo and a couple of others. When you go to YouTube or any video service, but particularly YouTube, you start searching for things like motivational videos, inspirational speeches, there's an unbelievable amount of results that will pop up and some unbelievably excellent videos that you can motivate that can motivate you and inspire you. One of the particular things I like to do every week, I don't get the opportunity um, and always the time to be able to do it more regularly, but you need to do it at least a few times of the week, maybe in the morning hours, uh, maybe when I'm reading, I'll finish a reading session by watching a few minutes of a motivational video on YouTube. There are certain speakers I like listening to, I like the TEDx uh, speeches, not on absolutely everything, and I have playlists that I can go to if I need to, but the combination of seeing motivational issues combined with a motivational audio gives you a different kind of experience. Think of the last time you watched a movie that really moved you and inspired you. Same idea, just smaller doses in the form of a maybe a three to five minute video on YouTube. All you need to do is brainstorm various key phrases like inspirational speeches, motivational videos, and search through ones that give you the sort of five minute kick, that little quick burst of motivation. It may seem like a quick fix or a pill that you're taking, but as we talked about earlier, sometimes motivation is not just naturally born into you, sometimes you have to create it. And if you don't have the ability right now to do some of the other exercises we've been talking about, maybe a quick trip to YouTube, watching a video that uplifts you is all you need to go into that next phone call you're about to have. And having a high level of energy and being engaged with your customer, your partner, whoever it is, versus having a low level of energy and not being as productive or excitable or persuasive if you're on a sales call, for example. So don't forget, you have these two tools like YouTube at your disposal for free that can really give you a boost of motivation in matters of minutes if you need it. I like to give myself deadlines. This one is really interesting. This is the concept of setting a deadline. And if you've ever crammed for an exam in college or university, trying to get everything into your brain at the last minute before the exam started, you kind of know what I'm talking about. The pressure of deadlines is huge. There's nothing more motivating than knowing there's a huge deadline hitting tomorrow morning and you're not done yet. I don't care if you're feeling sick, if your computer's broken, whatever it may be, you usually figure it out. You get really, really resourceful because you don't want to miss the deadline. The pain of missing the deadline is too strong and you do whatever it takes to make sure that you don't miss it. Well, why not use that concept to your advantage? If you know that you go through certain periods of low productivity where you maybe feel sorry for yourself or you're lazy or you're bored or even though you know you should be working, you choose to procrastinate instead, maybe the answer is that you don't have enough deadlines set up for yourself. Think about it for a minute. When was the last time you set a really aggressive deadline that you forced you to deliver? Maybe it's been a while. Maybe right now is the time for you to do it and give yourself something you need to accomplish in the next 24 hours or in the next week or in the next month, depending on the scale, that you'll get motivated again despite how you're feeling right now in this moment, even if you're feeling horrible. Let's talk about deadlines for just a second here. I actually use a program called ClickUp um, for my managing my tasks and everything else. And there's actually a way to build sprints within to what they call sprints in QuickUp, where you can actually set a row of tasks that you repeat on a regular basis and schedule it for a week. It's like everything's got to be done in the week. And I've done that with a number of different items that I'm working on, where I will literally say this week, I have to complete this. And this is all the tasks I need to do to get it done. And I found such more motivation in having that deadline and that task than I did by saying, hey, this week sometime, I really would like to get done this. So a new deadline, I think, will give you a sudden burst of energy and excitement and a sense of urgency to get things done. I actually get excited when my task list is empty and I get to work on fun stuff like this. Sometimes it's about going beyond your comfort zone, using almost a pain motivator to get yourself going. But usually the pressure of a deadline will also get you excited again. 
And that excitement that we may have lost when we talked about earlier will be reinvigorated and reignited for you as soon as you have some kind of either short or even a medium term deadline to work towards. And if you don't have one, create one right now so you can begin working towards it and get motivated again. The last one I want to mention here is a crisis situation. Now, these aren't necessarily things you want to create, but you can embrace them when they do happen as a way of reframing what's happening to you. Let's, let me give you an example. If you're a business owner and you're selling your products or services to customers and clients, or maybe you have a big customer base that's buying products from you, there's a good chance that something is going to go wrong. A customer or a client is not going to get what they expected, something is not going to be delivered correctly, a system is going to break, something is going to be upset along the line. This is really a common example in the business world. It happened to me with BNI um, and the pandemic. Back in March of 2020, every single chapter that was meeting in person suddenly moved to an online meeting format. And there were members that weren't happy about that because they feel the only way to do things was in person. So when you know, you think about that big change, it's a huge change and nobody wants to do it. When that happens and if it happens to the wrong person, you might have a really angry customer on your hands who's basically saying it's so unhappy it's making your life become miserable for a short or a longer period of time so rather than looking at the situation as something horrible that you never want to have happen maybe we need to embrace the fact that it is going to happen i.e something going wrong and it's the nature of the beast when it comes to business and use it to its advantage so the next time some sort of crisis situation like this one i've just told you about happens look for the gift in the fact that a you have a crisis to solve which will mean if it ever happens again you already know what to do b you're not going to have any time to think about it so you'll just have instant motivation you've got to get it fixed and you'll have a high level of energy to be productive to be driven to correct it and c you'll have an opportunity to actually correct a problem right a wrong that you potentially have caused in your customers eyes turn that customer around to loving you again and you've reaped the rewards of having this huge burst of energy just by virtue of solving that problem so sometimes yes they're uncomfortable but crisis situations can have a motivational benefit here's the thing i found when i deal with crisis situations i'm sure you would agree here you fixed the problem you're now ready to go you are on high alert you're energized to do something new as soon as you solve that crisis Remember that it was a motivator. It was a gift to get you into action again. Leap right into your next to-do. Use that motivation to do something productive that you may have been procrastinating about before. And you can reframe this. Anytime there's a new crisis situation, situation, it might suck for a little while, but there's definitely a gift there that's a built-in motivator that you can use and will become a huge advantage to you once that crisis is over and you'll be productive all over again. So... I hope you enjoyed this video. It's been kind of a new look, um, like a twist on some self-motivation tips that will help you when you're feeling a little bit unmotivated, demotivated, not motivated. And you can try one or more of these any given time. Share these ideas with other people as well. Share them with people in your organization. Share them with your customers. Share this video with people that you want to help get motivated and be successful. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. All the best. This is Steve Black with Smart Business. Thank you very much for watching. To your success.